What's going on everybody? Alonzo here with GolfCoastSmoke.com and today we're doing overnight beef ribs on our Traeger Ironwood 650 pellet grill. So we've done this so many times when it comes to briskets and they always turn out tender, juicy, and delicious. But how is it going to work for this huge rack of short ribs? It's significantly smaller, but we're going to do the same exact thing. Come on in, let's prep these up. It's going to be very minimal. And then we're going to get them right on the Traeger. This is the rack of beef ribs that we're working with today. People will call these dino ribs, they'll call them plate ribs, they'll call them short ribs. We're just going to call them beef ribs. So I've been watching a little bit of Jerby Barbecue, and I noticed that he doesn't trim any of this fat or silver skin off when he's smoking his beef ribs. We're going to try that out today, so I'm just going to take my knife and kind of round out the edges here, and that's perfect for me. And once we're done, this is all that we took off of the top of the beef ribs. So I'm thinking that maybe he does it because it really does minimize the damage that you can do to these beef ribs, as well as it makes it a lot quicker for the prep. I am going to go ahead and put some yellow mustard as a binder. I don't always do this, but for whatever reason, I just felt like doing it today. I'm also going to go ahead and put some on the bottom side, even though I'm not going to season this very much. Let's just go ahead and put it all over. Our first layer of seasoning is going to be 16 mesh black pepper and I don't have to put too much because our second layer is going to be southern bell and there is some black pepper in there but I just really like the bark that this is going to bring. This is the way we've been doing our brisket slightly. Turns out great. So a nice little coat all over. Don't forget the sides. And then we're going to do a light layer on the back as well. And here comes that flavor. We're going to be using Southern Bell all over these beef ribs. This is going to bring a nice, amazing beef flavor here. It's going to add a little bit more black pepper. And overall, it's just a very well-balanced beef rub. I really think you guys would enjoy it. If you guys don't have Southern Bell, any beef rub will work great here. I know a lot of people like salt and pepper only. That'll do great as well. And again, just a light layer on the backside. If you have any extra seasoning on the board, you can go ahead and tap it into the sides. But I tell you what, this looks really good. Okay, it's exactly 7 p.m. on Thursday night, so we'll see what time we finish these, and we're just gonna eat them when they're ready to go. We're gonna throw these on the Traeger Ironwood 650 at 180 degrees with super smoke on. Today I am using championship blend pellets from B&B and we're just gonna throw this on. We'll come check it probably in around four or five hours, see if it needs a spritz and then we're gonna go to bed and we're just gonna trust the Traeger and we'll wake up in the morning and see what we're working with. Okay, it's 11 o'clock and these ribs have been on the Traeger for four hours. We're gonna take a quick look and we're gonna spritz just with plain water. We wanna make sure to get some moisture on there because we're not gonna look at these again until around 8 a.m. or so. So when we come back in the morning, we're gonna bump up the temps. We'll talk about all that in a little bit, but for now, it's time to spritz these ribs and then get some shut-eye. You can see here that the bark is definitely starting to set just a little bit. I mean, they've only been in here for four hours, so nothing too crazy. They're still really soft because this temperature is not very high. So it's not cooking them too fast. But like I said, let's just go ahead and spritz all over with some water. Then we're just going to shut this back up and we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. the next day. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at our beef ribs. Let's see how they look. You can see that this is getting nice and barked up. It's dry in just a few areas. So we are gonna go ahead and continue to spritz this. We still have just water here, but the color is looking amazing. And I definitely like what I'm seeing. So I think this is gonna work out exactly the way we want. Obviously I'm not positive, but I'm gonna go ahead and I have a temperature probe. This plugs into my Traeger and I'm just gonna probe it right here in the middle. And I'll tell you what, that already feels like butter to be 100% honest. So I'm kind of curious what it's like in the middle of these beef ribs. 
We'll go ahead and wait just a second and we'll talk about that. Okay, the temperature probe on my Traeger app is reading 173 degrees and I want this to reach an internal of 210. Now, am I positive that that's gonna be the magic number and these are gonna be really nice and tender? No, but if I'm being honest, I'm shooting for a little bit over because I'd rather them be more tender than not tender enough. In this situation, I think that's gonna be the best thing for us. So I have to run into town for the next five hours or so. I'm not even gonna be able to look at these. Once my temperature probe tells me that it's 210 degrees internal, I'm just gonna pop it on keep warm and I'm gonna ask my wife to take them off the grill. And then after an hour or so resting on the counter, she could throw them back on if she wants, but I'm not really too worried about that. What I'm curious about is, is this gonna work? I mean, we threw these on the grill last night at 7 p.m. It's already 8 a.m. So it's been 13 hours that these have been on the grill. Now I'm gonna bump my temps up to 250 degrees and then I'm just gonna be patient. Like I said, I'm not gonna be here. I have no idea what's gonna happen, but we're definitely hoping for the best. Okay, so it's 12 o'clock. The ribs have not reached 210 degrees. The probe is reading 205 right now, but we're gonna see how they're doing. So these are reading 200 with our thermopin, and they feel very probe tender. So even though it hasn't reached that 210, these are done, and we're gonna go ahead and pull them off. I'm gonna let them rest on the counter for about an hour, and then we're gonna put them back in the Traeger on keep warm. <laughs> Okay, now it's 2 p.m. and I'm back from my training. These ribs have been cooking for 17 hours. They rested on the counter for one hour and now they've been back in the Traeger at 165 for another hour. Let's go ahead and take them out. We're gonna take them inside to slice, but I do wanna show you guys the ribs just a little bit right now. No wrap, super duper barky, looking awesome. You can see the back, the membrane pretty much disintegrated, I mean, the reason I leave it on is to keep the bones intact, but these are probably gonna fall off the bone here pretty easily. I mean, they feel nice and they feel squishy. Oh, you can see some of that fat popping right there. Man, that looks delicious. Let's get inside. These have rested long enough. Let's go ahead and slice. All right, let's see how we did on our 19 hour beef ribs. Oh yeah, it feels like zero resistance. Let's take a quick look here. I don't even know, I haven't looked at it, but I can almost guarantee you that that looks outrageous because it feels really damn good. The beef rib is just looking on point. I honestly can't wait to take a bite out of this. I'm thinking about freezing one of these in a vacuum sealed pack and seeing if we could sous vide it because I've heard that the best way to reheat barbecue is with a sous vide, but let's take a bite, let's keep slicing. I'm ready to eat this thing. That is beef rib perfection. Nothing more to say. That is insane. The bark is perfect. It's nice and crispy. It is so tender and so juicy. I'll show you what. It takes no effort at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm talking with my mouth full and I now I feel like I have the juice all over my beard, but this is insane. I was honestly a little skeptical and I was a little worried that this wouldn't work, but this is the easiest way in the world to make beef ribs. The easiest way in the world. All we did was threw it on the pellet grill, went to sleep, changed the temperature this morning and just waited till they were probe tender. These are honestly out of this world. They're up there with some of the best beef ribs that I've ever made. Typically, whenever I'm cooking beef ribs, I like them best when they're on my offset smoker. But this, man, I could hardly even tell that this was on a pellet grill. When you cook it so low and so slow like that and you use that super smoke, you really retain a lot of the smoke flavor in here. For anybody that doesn't like pellet grills, I would just invite you to try a recipe like this. If you don't have one, try it with your friend. And I honestly think that you're going to be Pretty impressed. I'm really impressed right now. The kids are right here waiting to eat. My wife's waiting to eat. So I'm gonna let you guys go, but 
try this one, the easiest way to smoke beef ribs in the entire world. As always, I really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.